Hi. It's a song story today, so it's really going to be a lot of fun, kind of an adventure. But as far as the first activity to introduce the story, I have a whole container of night crawlers because our story today is about underground animals. And underground animals are really interesting um, because they live and have their dens underground and worms of course live underground so I thought we'd take a look at those today. The first thing I'm going to do is split my camera to um, the table so that we can see some worms up close and I really would encourage you if it's going to rain to go out sometime and look at some worms up close. I love worms. I think they're fascinating. So I'm going to take my little pencil and I'm going to be gentle with them. And these are just worms and worms and worms. And worms, of course, live in tunnel underground. And what they do is they decompose things. So any dirt that you see might have gone in one end of the worm and out the other. But worms are so cool. They're a little slimy. So after, if, I encourage you guys to go out after a rain and see if you can find any worms. So how can you tell which end of a worm is the head and which end is the tail? I'm gonna put this one down and see if he crawls. Let's take a look. I'm gonna bug him a little bit. Come on, buddy. There we go. Well, the most simple way is if they start crawling, the one that starts crawling and moving whichever direction he's going, that would be the head end. And the other one, there we go. So there's the head and there's the tail. He's moving. Okay. So how big do you think my worm is? I'm going to use a little ruler here and I'm going to check them out. Whoa! Stretch them out a little bit and there is, he's a little bit more than six inches long and of course because worms kind of, they have these little little nubs on their underside that grab onto things and so as you can see they stretch and move and they use those little nubs at, on their underside to pull themselves along. So this one is going to pull himself right off of my, my hand, and down he goes. But I have lots and lots of worms here today. I'll probably go out and feed the robins later, or maybe I'll even go fishing. Here's a shorter worm, I think. But these are night crawlers. Now, after it rains, their tunnels get a little bit a little bit flooded so they'll come up to the surface and they eat um, dead leaves and things and it, the leaves pass through their whole body and come out the other end and then you have worm castings and it looks just like dirt so worms actually make dirt out of the dead things that they eat they're decomposers so there we go and worms are really fun to play with. Now, worms are very sensitive to sunlight. And so if you're playing with some worms, make sure you do it in the shade and then kind of return them to the dirt where you found them so they can go back underground where they live. So there we go. Worms are so cool. All right. So I think... I'm going to wipe off my hands here and return the camera back to the one that's not at the table. And we are going to sing a story song that you're going to help make up the story song as we go along. And we're going to start. Have you, have you heard the song, There's a Hole in the Bottom of the Sea? Well, this song is There's a Hole in the Ground at the Bottom of the Tree. So this is what it's going to sound like. And I'm going to have you sing it with me. Here we go. It starts like this. There's a hole in the ground at the bottom of the tree. There's a hole in the ground in, at the bottom of the tree. There's a hole. There's a hole. 
there's a hole at the bottom of the tree. So sing that with me. There's a hole, there's a hole, there's a hole at the bottom of the tree. Now you get to choose which animal is living in that hole. So here's our first set of choices. There's three animals that we're gonna choose from that live underground. A fox, a badger, and a burrowing owl. So which one would you like to choose? Let's see. Okay, I heard you say fox. So we're gonna start with a fox in the hole. So we're gonna sing it again. There's a hole in, <laughs> there's a fox in the hole in the ground at the bottom of the tree. There's a fox in the hole in the ground at the bottom of the tree. There's a hole, there's a hole, there's a hole at the bottom of the tree. Ah, fox. Okay, so now we get to make another choice. What else is in that hole? What else lives underground? Here's our second set of choices. We have a rabbit, a mouse, and a groundhog. Oh, those are all great choices. What do you think you'd like to choose? Oh, I heard you say rabbit. So we're gonna do rabbit. There we are. So we're gonna repeat what we did before with the fox and then the rabbit. So it sounds like this. There's a fox and a rabbit in the hole in the ground at the bottom of the tree. There's a fox and a rabbit in the hole in the ground at the bottom of the tree. There's a hole, there's a hole, there's a hole in the bottom of the tree. Now I hope you're singing along with me because we keep repeating that chorus. So now you get to choose another animal. What else lives underground? Let's see our next three choices. Oh yeah, my favorite, skunk. Toad and chipmunk. Which one do you think you would like to choose? How about a toad this time? Can I hear you say toad? Yep, I did hear you say toad. So here we go. We're gonna repeat the fox and the rabbit and then we're gonna get to the toad. There's a toad <laughs> in the hole in the ground at the bottom of the tree. There's a toad and a rabbit and a fox in the hole in the ground at the bottom of the tree. There's a hole, there's a hole, there's a hole at the bottom of the tree. So there we go. Now we're gonna do another set of choices. There's lots of animals that live underground. So here's your next set. Oh, a mole and a turtle and a garter snake. What's your choice now? Ooh. I heard you say garter snake, so we're gonna do garter snake. So let's sing it. <laughs> so we've got a lot to remember this time. So here we go. There's a garter snake and a toad and a rabbit and a fox in the hole at the bottom of the tree. There's a garter snake and a toad <laughs> and a rabbit and a fox. At, in the hole at the bottom of the tree. There's a hole, there's a hole. There's a hole at the bottom of the tree. So now let's see, we picked toad and we picked garter snake and our next three choices are, let's see what they are. What will you choose this time? Three more animals. Here they come. Oh yeah, a prairie dog, a crayfish and a shrew. Wow, what would you like to pick this time? Wow, I think because, I don't know, what do you think? Oh, you said crayfish? Dun, 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 dun. All right, crayfish, here we go. We've got a lot to remember. We've got one, two, three, four, five animals to remember. So here we go, see if we can do it. Are you ready? There's a crayfish and a garter snake and a toad and a rabbit. <laughs> and a fox <laughs> in a hole at the bottom of the tree. There's a crayfish and a garter snake and a toad, whoops, a toad and a rabbit and <laughs> a fox at the bottom of the tree. There's a hole, there's a hole, there's a hole at the bottom of the tree. Wow, that was a lot. I think I mixed up my pictures now too, so we better watch out. But there's a couple more choices that were going on. So let's see what those next three choices are. Okay, an ant, a spider, and an earthworm. 
Well, I know what I picked today because we saw some earthworms and we were having fun with them earlier. I would pick earthworm. Dun, da, da, da. <laughs> How about you? Okay, you pick earthworm too? Good, here we go. Well, there's a lot to remember. Let's see if we can do it. There's an earthworm and a garter snake and a toad and a rabbit <laughs> and a fox in the hole in the ground at the bottom of the tree. There's an earthworm and a garter snake and a toad and a rabbit and a fox in the hole at the bottom of the tree. There's a hole, there's a hole, there's a hole at the bottom of the tree. How many more of these are we gonna do? Two more? I think so, I think we can do it. Okay, oh, just one more. I got it all messed up here. Oh, so now our choices are, is there anything else in that hole besides animals? Of course there is. There's all kinds of crazy stuff in that hole. There might be grass, there might be mushrooms, there might be some moss. What would you like to pick for this story? Did I hear you say moss? I sure did. There we go, some green moss in that hole. So, see if you can remember all of this. <laughs> Here we go. Uh, there is moss and an earthworm and a garter snake and a toad and a rabbit and a fox at the bottom of the tree. There's some moss and a worm and a garter snake. Whoa, I'm dropping it. And a toad and a rabbit and a fox in the hole in the ground at the bottom of the tree. There's a hole, there's a hole, there's a hole at the bottom of the tree. Okay, if, you, now this is the part that I'm gonna sing to you. Here we go. If you go to the hole in the ground at the bottom of the tree, look out! If you go to the hole in the ground at the bottom of the tree, you better look out! You never know what you'll find in the hole in the ground at the bottom of the tree. So look out, because you just might see, whoops, some, let's see if we can remember. Can you remember without the pictures this time? I bet you can. Some moss, some moss, and a worm, and a crayfish, and a garter snake, and a chipmunk, and a groundhog. No, wait, not a groundhog, a rabbit, right? <laughs> a rabbit and a fox in a hole at the bottom of the tree. Let's see if we can do it again. There's some moss and a worm and a crayfish and a garter snake and a toad and a rabbit. They're all hiding from that fox at the hole in the bottom of the tree. And there's a hole, there's a hole, there's a hole at the bottom of the tree. That's a lot of animals that we had in that hole. <laughs> There's my rabbit, and I dropped my fox on the floor. Oh well. Well, we were talking about so many animals that live underground. Well, I have some puppets here, and some of the animals that we were talking about, I thought some of them are predators, and some of them are prey. So I was just wondering who might eat who? <laughs> who might eat who? So let's start with our burrowing owl. Owls do live underground. What do you think a predator like our burrowing owl might eat? What do you think? I don't know, who is the owl's prey? Predator and prey, would it be a fox maybe? What would he be his favorite dinner? A turtle maybe? Whoops, I'll tie down a turtle. <laughs> Maybe mouse or a rabbit. Well, I think this, this owl has a couple of choices. What do you think? You're right, a rabbit and a mouse. Predator, prey. And the other prey, mouse, rabbit. Okay, let's see, how about how about a fox? What do you think would be the fox's prey? Well, that's a good question. 
I think maybe we saw one when we had a rabbit hopping by. But what about the turtle? Do you think a turtle might be good prey for a fox? Sometimes. Foxes have big, sharp teeth and strong jaws. They might be able to get through the shell of a small turtle. So, predator, prey. What do you think about this? <laughs> Probably not. I don't think a little small brewing owl would try to get a fox. They're both predators and they both prey on a lot of smaller animals. So that's a little bit of fun with our <clears throat> predator and prey puppets. Ah, they have to look out for the predators. So we are gonna do a little um, craft, remember animals in holes in ground right now. And because we've been talking about worms today, all of those yummy worms on my plate. <laughs> I'm not gonna eat them, no. Ah. I'm going to let them go in a little while. Actually, I'm going to go fishing. And we are going to do a little craft that's a worm, a worm weaving. And we're going to need the paper, maybe some brown paper. Or if you just have white paper that you can color brown, you can make this craft too. I happen to have some brown paper. And this is going to be the dirt that the worms live in. And we also need some scissors and maybe some markers. But that is really all that you need today to do this craft, is a little bit of paper, some markers, and some scissors. So what I had was a piece of brown paper. And oh, I forgot that I was gonna put this camera back to the table because it's so much easier for you guys to see if I do. Okay, so here's my ruler, there's my pencil, there's my paper. Okay, so I have a brown piece of paper. And we're going to turn this into a picture with some worms on it. So I'm going to, they call this hot dog fold because it's the long way. I'm going to take my paper and I'm going to do a hot dog fold and then crease it right down the middle. And then I'm going to take the ruler and I need to draw a line just like this across the top. See, this is the where I folded it and this is the edges that are sticking out. And now I drew a line. And maybe I will use a marker so you can see what I did because that pencil is just not showing up on camera. Here we go. There's my line. So I'm going to take the scissors now and I'm going to take my thumb and I'm going to do inch long cuts all the way up to the line from that fold to the line. And so each time I put my thumb down because that's about an inch wide and I'm making cuts all the way to the top. One, two, three, and more and more cuts all across my hot dog folded piece of paper. So like, if you don't have a brown piece of paper, that is okay. You can use crayons or markers to make it look like dirt. And that would actually be fun. You could scribble black and brown and all kinds of things to make it look really cool like dirt. Whoops, one more inch right there and we're done so let's take a look and see what it looks like when I open it up whoa it's got all of these strips attached so that is what we're gonna weave the worms in and out of although not the real slimy worms that we were playing with we're gonna make some worms out of paper so I have a red piece of paper I thought that might be a good worm color. And because worms are kind of wiggly and, and sometimes we even think they um, almost look like they're shaping like an S, I'm gonna take my scissors and cut a squiggly line. Can you see my squiggly line? Okay, whoops, and so, Part of it's squiggly, but the other part is straight. So now I'm going to come along the other side and make the other side squiggly like a worm. And there's my worm. Okay, I'm going to put my red paper away. And I think even though 
worms don't really have eyes, but they have spots on their body that are sensitive to the sun. And they've got all kinds of other lines and markings on them. I'm gonna make my worm look a little bit more worm-like by putting some markings on them. So then, we were weaving before with some nature items, but this is what you do. You stick the worm's nose under one strip and over the other, and under the next, and over the other, and under the next, and over the other until he sticks inside your piece of paper that looks like the ground. There, can you see him? There's, I've got one worm. So the next color worm I thought I would make is orange. So again, I've taken my scrap of paper and I'm gonna do some swirly lines all across my paper until the end. And then I'm gonna come down and that straight edge, I'm gonna make it swirly right into the other one. See, there's my worm. There we go. So you can use your markers to add all kinds of things on your worm. I talked about how the worms had little nubs on their belly, so when they crawl around, they can dig those in and they can move along the ground or along your hand <laughs> and you can feel them, they feel a little bit rough. So there's that worm and then here's maybe his eyes. I'm gonna make almost real looking eyes there. Back into his tail. There we go. So I have another worm. And I'm gonna work, I'm gonna weave this worm this way. So I'm gonna go under, over, oops, under, over, under, and uh oh, <laughs> I lost his nose. Come on, worm. Under, over, under, over, and now I have, I lost his nose again. There we go. Now I have two worms in the dirt. There we go. So you can also draw other things on your page. Besides, you can make as many worms as you want to to fit. You could even do like a really teeny worm. Here's a small worm. I'm going to do a small orange worm. You could do a little one because not all worms are really big. Some of them are really small. So here's a little, here's a little teeny worm. And you can read that in your, in your drawing too. That's kind of fun. It'll fit right there. But you can also add things to your dirt, you know, little rocks and pebbles that would be out there. And you can just make a picture. And of course, you know, when we were singing the song, there was moss. Your choice was moss or grass or mushrooms. You could do some grass. Maybe do some moss. And you can even do some mushrooms. All in a hole in the ground <laughs> at the bottom of the tree. So there's a little craft project today, and I'm gonna switch the camera back to the face. And there we are. So I hope you enjoyed our song. It was kind of fun to sing about all of those animals and try to remember all those animals that live underground. And so go on out after it rains and see if you can find any earthworms and have fun doing your worm weaving. Have a great day. Bye everybody. Well, thanks Anne, that's really cool. And if you missed our live session and you want to come up with your own song, remember you can just choose whatever animals you want and come up with a song of your own. And if you wanna choose uh, what animals we're picking or uh, what we're gonna do for our next story, then you can join us live every Thursday for Let's Create a Story. Uh, tomorrow is Friday, and every Friday we do First Step Science, where we learn about scientific tools and do fun science experiments. And every Tuesday we're doing Get Crafty, so you can join us live for crafts, and you can uh, join and create with us. This is all part of GLCM Stream, which is our uh, museum's streaming service. We're doing online programming. Right now, all of these programs are free. Eventually, this is gonna be a membership that's gonna be $8 a month. 
So that would be one way to support the museum when fewer people are coming through the door. Uh, another way is to go to greatlakeskids.org slash donate and you can donate to the Children's Museum to keep the doors open and the lights on. Uh, thank you for joining us. And uh, again, if you want to join us for these sessions live, go to greatlakeskids.org slash news and events. And all of the registration links are right there. I hope you join us uh, next week for another great story on Fridays for First Step Science and on Tuesdays for Get Crafty. And until then, we'll say goodbye. Bye. Bye. <laughs>